the truth. And this is so. If I stayed here, could you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Should be all right. Episode two. Sorry in advance. Episode two. There's a little man crying in the background, so it's not ghosts or anything (laughs) like that. Well, we probably could have got more. Sorry in advance. I I like Jeremy Renner films. Yeah. Um, Wind River is actually a, a sequel to the Marvel Universe. It's how he got his name, Hawkeye. Origin stories. Oh, yeah. It's an origin I, I, story. I, could, I could see that. It's actually I mean, his Indian name. <laughs> Keep it going, but it's muted. The, the Shoshone Arapaho thought so much of him. Like, hey, this the dude's, like, protecting <laughs> us, protecting our women. We're gonna, we got to give we you. Have, we have to show him our sacred ways. You know, like, you know, cousin, we got to give you, you know, a name. <laughs> maybe maybe so, not, maybe not relative. cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so Do people it. watching... Episode two, podcast time. We're really doing this. Oh, God. there it is. We are live on Facebook, and so. we are live with the one and only P Weez, P Weezy, mm-hmm. P Dub, Tokyo in the house. Um, <laughs> straight from the two nine four. The link to the last podcast is up. Number two now. But uh, yeah, Stuart, when I was. Me and Ethan were discussing, like, I had a, I was going to open up the story, and, mm-hmm. you know, like, the last couple of days, I've been bringing up, like, the music thing, but I've been replacing, you know, Love You with Love Stew. Mm-hmm. I mean, not going to lie, it's pretty funny, but <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was telling Ethan this in the, in the, on the ride over earlier today. My auntie, you know, like, 11 o'clock in the afternoon, she's like, she inboxes me. She's, okay, let me, let me, before I continue, let me, let me say this. She deleted me from Facebook maybe like years ago. Mm-hmm. We don't talk whatsoever. Sounds like the rest of my family. <laughs> I think that's a lot okay, of family. Anyway, yeah. But that's a lot of family. But And, you know, she's a devout Christian. She has a good heart on her. But out of nowhere, she was like, do you know Stuart James? I'm like, hell yeah, I know Stuart James, man. <laughs> and he's like, he's a rapper. I was like, yeah, he's a rapper. She's like, are you really in love with him? I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I love him. He's like a brother. But she's like, oh, so you're like that? I was like, no, I'm not like that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Just, so she's going on a little bit, talking about talking about my dad, you know, kind of got heartfelt there. Mm-hmm. But she ends the conversation with, I mean, if you are, that's okay, because I still love you. <laughs> Damn, you just got accused of. That's I mean, awesome. You know, like like Bob said, you know, not my first or my last. <laughs> Did you see the uh, the, the Lou Diamond Phillips DUI? Oh thing? god, that was that was awesome. I thought that was <laughs> not my best. Richie. Yeah, I expected this from you, Bob. <laughs> not Richie, but not my Richie. Richie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shared the hell out of that with oh, them. Oh man, that was so awesome. Oh, there was one too where it's like uh, it shows him like he's trying to call for uh, bail money or something, and then Bob's on there. Well, you're the asshole yeah. with all the money. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking around Ethan one day. I was like, yeah, when Stuart makes it. Stuart's going to be like, hey, Ethan, did you get mom this? And Ethan, you know what? You got to turn around and look at him and say, hey, why don't you get yourself? You're the asshole with all the money around here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get some hot hot topics going. Okay, I got one here. It says, four dead after California shootings. And it goes on to say the gunman tried to enter the school. God damn. Now I know why I don't we like looking there. at the news, man. Right. See, I, I mean, try to look at, like, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I try to look past that stuff. So wait. I mean, it's not not because not because it should be ignored, but because that's... holy shit, man, that's dark. <laughs> so wait, he it says he tried to enter the school. Was he outside the school and killed four people? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's. I mean, like that's that's terrible. Like that's the world we live in. A lot of people got offended by uh, Eminem's line about Columbine. Remember? I'll take. What does he say? I'll take. Uh, an AK-47, a revolver, and, and four nine or something. Put him, or what, I don't know. Say something about that, but put him in a line or something like that. And I don't know, but it was about Columbine, and everybody got like, like if you listen to the finished album of the LP, Marsh Mathers LP, it's edited out of that. What? That's how it's like. That's how controversial it was. Yeah, or? like they literally edited it out of the the explicit version of the album. But yet nowadays, like I mean. I can understand that, but then nowadays, like, everybody gets sensitive 
I'll bring up that about last time. Red Man called it Fly Gay, and everybody got all offended by that. A fly buzzing around his studio. Well, I think the other night, me and Ethan were talking about... Um, nowadays, it's, it's almost like we try to tell people what to be offended by, and that sometimes maybe we're a little too offended by things. Yeah. I think we use the term, you know, like, that's that's retarded or that's gay. And, yeah. I mean, in some aspects, yeah. I mean, it could be offensive, but at the same time, it's... It's, it's not like we we've been doing it for a long period of time now I just I think everybody just wants to be offended because it makes them feel important that's what I said last time like I feel like people take something upon themselves and feel offended by it and tell the world they're offended just so that or people... try to tell people to be offended by it yeah and it's like I don't know like I told them if somebody called me a fag I'm gonna be like all right cool like I know I'm not gay so it don't bother me but when you cost like I don't know Cooley had a good point about you know going into like closet gays which is a really controversial topic might be but he had a good point where he said you know why do people hate on Justin Bieber he's just like a young boy what's wrong with you and your sexuality that you have to like hate on this little boy over here who's like probably getting more poon than you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is a valid point well I think it's I think it's a really like it is a big big thing and it's kind of I wouldn't say taboo but it is, it's real Mm-hmm. I think I was listening to the new Jay-Z album. There was a song you told me about, Smile, when he's talking about his, his mother, like, basically grew up, you know, having to pretend to be straight, have a family because she was scared to be openly gay. And mm-hmm. But then he goes on to talk about, you know, I'm happy that you can be who you are nowadays. You can love who you want. But mm-hmm. that, that is, it is kind of, it is kind of good that we're at the stage in our history that we can be, you know, people can live how they want, be who they want. But it's kind of sad that we force people to live like that. Well, I think, like what we talked about too is if you're like if you're a gay person I don't bother me but until you start trying to hit on me and bring your gayness on me then it becomes a problem because it's the one thing I was talking about (laughs) that I had a problem with is um you know the 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 really uh what's what's the word like eccentric would that be like really out there uh, gays, the ones that really kind of throw it in your face, you know? Yeah, they're just open. Like, they're like, oh, well, you got a problem with me sucking dick? It's like, no. <laughs> no, I got a problem with that, man. Do what you want. I got a problem with you fucking telling me about it. It's like they you have know? to, like, reassure it's, the world they're gay. Yeah. It's, it's one of those situations where it's like, I'm not going to sit there and tell you about how, All you know, the snatch I, was, I ate in the last week, like, you know. <laughs> like, zero, I but still. I my girlfriend. You want to hear about that? <laughs> no? Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> That's kind of what they do. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, but you know that bugs me too. Like when dudes kind of like just, I don't I, know. I just want to find a common, like, middle ground when it comes to like sex, with like gays or whatever. And I I assume it'd be eating ass, or something, right? I mean, you I just can't know. sit there and like suck pole the whole time, right? You got to mix it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sure you gay. <laughs> well, I'm sure you gays yeah, need to switch yeah. it up every once in a while. Yeah, you right. You right. <laughs> Imagination don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yes. That's kind of I don't know, man. That's a touchy subject, you know, like everybody like you could sit there and exp- like I don't know, nowadays it's so useless trying to explain things to people because you could tell people about your point of view and how you see something and then they still find the smallest thing to flip it on you and make it sound like you're against it even though you just openly said like okay i support your little you know your your marriage your gay marriage doesn't mean i'm gay but doesn't mean you have to like push that on nobody else i support it but then if you say something else wrong just something small well, they flip it on you and it's like, it's the same thing as like uh remember that episode of atlanta yeah. remember where everything paperboy said was just like yeah the wrong thing to say <laughs> and then everybody was offended you know he said something about uh what what was it like uh what did he say again about like transvestites or something? Oh yeah, he said. Uh, uh, he said like, you guys are the ones that called me weird because I said uh, Caitlyn Jenner wasn't a woman or something like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they made a big deal about it on that show that he was on and everything. It's I don't know. Well, it's remember ridiculous. Joe Rogan? He had uh, somebody on his show about they were talking about um because he put a tweet up that said something about like Caitlyn Jenner was born a man, he'll always be a man regardless if he got. A sex change or whatever like he's still a man from birth and all that so i don't know it was just like really weird because everybody just got thrown out like everybody just blew up over that and like everybody had an opinion all of a sudden about it well look at the whole thing with like uh boy scouts allowing girls 
like that uh what's his name ben shapiro i think his name is but he was on joe rogan's podcast also he made a really good point about it too um where he said that only boys are allowed in the boy scouts you know and this like feminist or whatever said oh well where does it say that in the word boy scouts he said <laughs> you know and he, 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 he drives a valid you know, point you know because you know why like they have boy scouts and they have girl scouts well in that if, case if, can can a can a boy be a girl scout yeah exactly I mean, like, hey, what if some little kid wants to slang cookies too? I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm I mean, saying. is it wrong to say, hey, you can't do it because you're not a girl? Well, see, the thing, the thing that really kind of like, I don't know, do, do Boy Scouts sell anything? I don't know, like. Yeah, I think they do. I think because I, I mean, that's the whole point of it is they basically like hire, they basically put you in here. We're gonna teach you these skills, but you need to sell cookies and you need to raise money for this. You know, well, see, that's the thing about Girl Scouts it. too. All, all I ever see them doing is like selling cookies, and then all I ever see Boy Scouts doing is like camping and learning like all these survival skills. Well, I think what they should start doing is community events. Why don't they do that if community people are service or... if people are buying their product to keep their program going? Why don't they just put them all together? Exactly. You why know, can't like, why, have, why can't, why, why does it have, scouts? yeah, why, why can't they just have scouts? Like youth scouts or like something. Like the Legion of Scouts? You know, like, that has to be something cool, man. Dog mm. soldiers? <laughs> or no, the pup soldiers or something, you know? <laughs> the cub soldiers? <laughs> the, the cub soldiers? <laughs> yeah. No, it has to be something non-discriminatory, man. Oh, man. But either way, yeah, you're it's, right about it's just, that. man, I don't know. Like, scouts of America? Society is just so weird these days where you That'd have to pay for everything. Like your music isn't free, your gaming nothing's free. Dude, nothing's free. Yeah, nothing's exactly. Free I mean, look at me. Like I work a job. I like my job. I like what I do. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not necessarily get paid for my work. I get paid for my time. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, even look at music nowadays. If you're to put out a song, the way you can make music off of it is that somebody somebody's going out there and saying, "I'm gonna buy this song because not only is the work I put in that make this money to buy the song worth it, but listening to it is worth my time." Mm-hmm. And that's the sad thing about how much the value, like, well, not, yeah, the value dropped in music is that mumble rap is the hottest thing right now. I, th- a I bunch of guys jumping and doing auto tune and saying A after every, like, two bars. Well, see, that that's what I said, too. Was like, uh, I, like, uh, there's, I don't know. Nobody's supposed when, to when work we, anymore. Like, when, we, when we're looking up beats on YouTube and shit, and then everybody's making up these stupid ass little A, you know, and, and it well, actually sounds kind of. Badass, just throw some auto tune on it's, that. It's we'll make just it like hit what right he away. said. Nobody wants to work, and that's like music wise, nobody wants to put in work because thinking about a dope ass verse takes a long time. So they're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna freestyle. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> like people, I, I, it's, it's bad, man, because yeah, nobody wants to work anymore because it, it's hard work. It's hard work to take your time to learn. Well, that's just how America is nowadays. Nobody really wants to work anymore. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing uh, J. Cole had a line where he said I came up here to take advantage of that shit y'all take for granted and if you look at a lot of these people coming into the United States immigrants that Trump doesn't want in they're taking all the jobs that nobody wants but they're going to making a killing off of it because nobody wants to work so then they're getting all these hours and then everybody's getting mad like oh why are these immigrants coming in well of course they want to work harder than your ass so what are you mad about you don't even want that job why are you mad that they're taking the job you don't want exactly like there are a lot of hispanics not maybe not maybe not not in just hispanics hispanics but just immigrants in general like they come here they have opportunity here mm-hmm. you know not only that not only are there some jobs here but there's the freedom to be to live the life you want and i think somewhere along the lines we just kind of took took that for granted you know i have uh my cousins was married to a Mexican. You know, he grew up in Arizona, grew up in a Mexican neighborhood, and mm-hmm. basically, well, we, we we talk about things like that all the time, and I think we kind of kind of came up with this same idea you did that they're willing to take jobs, uh, quote unquote, white people don't want anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody wants to work fast food anymore. Yeah, but I mean, if if someone's willing to do that job and work their ass off for it, why not? Well, I, I mean, I, I see like mad posts on Facebook of people who are like. They have a criteria for their job, like, oh, does anybody know who's hiring more than 12 an hour, but not fast food? I've seen, like, hundreds of posts like that throughout the past few years, and it's like, does it matter? Are you, are you making money or not? What Are you worried that one of your Facebook friends is going to come into McDonald's and see you standing there taking an order? <laughs> like, you, like, like, your status in society is, like, determined by your job. It's sickening because it's like, okay, social media world, like, yeah, you're somebody apparently because you get like 50 likes everything you post 
but in reality you really ain't shit you're not really interesting at all because if you were in a room with like five if they were on this podcast they'd be sitting back on their phone like um yeah I mean, I've met a lot of quote unquote Facebook famous people in my time and mm-hmm. they're some of the lamest people ever man. yeah I mean social media just that's that's what I'm writing my research paper that's on. a that's a drug if there ever was one you know if I could sit there and sell like maybe Facebook likes or shares I would because I'd be a millionaire Dude, really? <laughs> well, and, and, and get you a thousand likes tonight. I'm gonna like, copyright that there's idea. There's a lot of goods and bads to social media because you can like. There's a lot of people who get famous off social media, and there's a lot of people like the fucking Cash Me Outside girl. Look at that. She's getting her own reality show. That's she's terrible. Made, she's getting a reality yeah. show. Yeah. Oh my god. We need well, to have think, our own reality. But just think show. of just think of like how yeah. much how, like how much good social media brings, but at the same time, how bad it is because people just share the shit out of stupid stuff. People share the shit out of like it influences children. Yeah, and that's another thing. I feel like you should be at least eighteen to be on Facebook. Like For when, sure. like when we were growing up, we stro- we we would like strive to do something in life. We would strive to get a good job. Nowadays, everybody's striving to be Facebook famous or popping on Instagram. Hey, yeah, everybody's just trying to get. Fa- everybody's trying to come up. Quick. Everybody. Nobody wants, wants to work for it though. They everybody think- wants to be famous. Everybody wants to make a lot of money doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, last time I checked, there aren't too many jobs that do then. The jobs that do pay like that. Probably took a lot of hard work to get there. I know, and I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm honestly go like, to college or get a labor job. Like even with music, like people, there's a lot of people who like, oh, that rap career ain't working out, and it's like, yeah, for some people, but it's like, what is their, what is their like, uh, I guess, idea of success or like of it working out? You yeah, know, is it getting mad money or if you're if you're like I know a lot of like like Jance Jansonia, dope ass artist. He travels. He does a lot of shows. He does a lot of people know who he is. He's not getting paid for it. It's it's a struggle for everybody who's coming up, but at the same time, they're living the dream that they want. If that's what they wanted to do, they're going out and doing it and not making excuses. But they're still working normal jobs. Yeah. So they're grinding harder than most people are who are working just a normal job. But yet, I mean, because they're not signed or because they're not like overseas or all kinds of shit like whatever people's ideas of making it like they don't give a shit I mean he's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen and I mean it's just a matter of what you think what your idea of success is that's I all think, that matters I think people aren't so much okay here's how I look at things I guess in life there are people who don't want others to do well and there are people who are jealous of things like I'm sure, like with music you I'm sure you're really enthusiastic about music and I'm sure that drives people crazy mm-hmm. because it's hard to be enthusiastic about something. It's hard to have, have enthusiasm with just about anything because I've always been, I've always heard and kind of been told from families that you can't really do any, be successful in life if you don't have enthusiasm. That's true. You know? Entrepreneurs. Be passionate about and, what you want. And if you go through life saying, oh, well, that person's doing better than me. I don't like him. You know, yada, yada, yada. Is that going to make you any more successful? Probably not. Well, see, and the other thing I brought up with music is why can't people come together make some dope ass music help each other get out there especially in a state like this seems like everybody's out for themselves or they click up with like a certain group of people and then it's just like they they're the only ones that can make it no one else can it's like they're scared of everybody like outshining each other instead of everybody trying to uplift each other to get exactly one of them in the spotlight then when one of them gets up then everybody can get up if there was one person that wanted to work with us that could take us somewhere that had a better like mm-hmm. i don't know voice or personality for what we're doing like this podcast mm-hmm. i would i would work my ass mm-hmm. out to try and get them in here like i wouldn't be like oh that's cool you want to do a podcast and okay. then just like not offer any advice or anything because i've seen that like um when i first started taking pictures that you know, I've worked with a couple photographers and everything, and they're they don't they don't want to show me shit. They're just like, oh, well, can I check out your bare pictures? minimum that that it, that will get you by, but not more. Than not that. even that. Not even that. All, everything I learned about that camera, I learned from like YouTube or or reading about it. You know, YouTube is probably the only unselfish teacher that wants you to do better than it. Word. <laughs> I mean, because like there's like yeah. even even setting up this podcast and everything. Like I I learned all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. about like marketing it. And uh, how to get it on iTunes. By the way, it's on iTunes now. Oh. And um, someone's on iTunes. Episode yeah. Two, episode yeah, two yeah. coming soon. Episode two will be right behind it here pretty soon. But uh, you know, I got us on a hosting site and everything. We have a we have a link. You know, so we're all that stuff I learned how to do myself. But you know, back to the whole photography thing. Like these guys didn't want. 
anything to do with me the moment they saw my pictures. You know, I'm, I'm, you, they have all this equipment. They spend how many thousands of dollars on their equipment, and I'm taking better pictures with a fucking kit lens and a and a you know five hundred dollar <laughs> camera. So I don't know. It's it's just ridiculous that nobody wants to help each other out. It's but. like it's it's cool if you want like. It's cool that you want to take me under your wing, but the moment I pass you up. Don't get salty. Exactly. Let's, let's keep working together because there's probably something you can teach me or something that I learned that you didn't know yet. Or, or better yet, why don't you try and show everybody something? Try to show somebody everything you know. And when that person gets successful, at some point you could say, hey, I helped them get there. Yeah. You know, like, hey, I mean, you know, I'm not the sole reason why they're successful, but I like to think I helped them become successful. Mm-hmm. You know, what's, what's wrong with passing on knowledge? Yeah, exactly. I mean, what's somewhere along the lines, yeah. that just became like the worst thing in the world, just to show everybody everything that I know. On Facebook Live, this guy said, talk about how people on reservations bully or try to pick on someone who dreams big, like local haters making fun of an artist. Hey, that's true. That's that just, happens that's, so goddamn much out here. I think security at it. its best. Yeah. Okay, so this guy who did this, um, Prez, he did a video for us in Minot. And um, basically, he's from Fayetteville, which is where J. Cole's from. That's and awesome. he told us nobody fucked with J. Cole. Very few people fucked with J. Cole in, in, in Fayetteville before he went to New York. Because when he went to New York, all of a sudden he blew up. Then all of a sudden everybody back home was like, oh, I, I listened to him back then. And everybody wanted to know him then. But well, it's like... How's the song go back then? He didn't want me. But now I'm hot tail yeah. on me. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's like the... That's like the <laughs> That's like the, the truest thing ever, though, is like when your local people just treat you like a local. They're like, oh, yeah, he's dope, but he's from here. They try to keep you local. Yeah. And and, it, and it's it's just one of those situations where they see the talent, they see the potential. And that's where a lot of people get stuck at, though, is where they start getting treated like a local. And then people just it kind of shoots their, their ego down. Or not ego, but just their, you know, it just makes them feel like oh, that's all I'm ever going to be. Or they, they pe- that's kind of the, the wall you need to get over in order to kind of progress. If, oh, look at this guy. If, if Has you, dreams. If, if you put yourself huh. in that box, that's where that's 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 as far as you're gonna get. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, if, if I was in that situation, I I'd, I'd be kind of irritated. But at the same time, I deep in the back of my head, I'd be a little honored because the, I'm all this person thinks about. Me being successful drives them crazy, and it's if anything, that's gonna motivate me to work harder. So you know. When you want to be successful, when you want to do good things in this life, you know, you're not always going to be the most popular person in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and that's sad, especially among reservations where success, I, I want to say the success rate in just about anything is just far and few between, mm-hmm. you know, from maybe the outside world's eyes because we don't have doctors, we don't have lawyers, we don't have famous athletes. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't have any well known entertainers either. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, it's. When somebody aspires to be that, you know, we're kind of we trained ourselves to think less of people who think like that. Yeah, and the other thing, you know, we don't we don't teach younger kids. We don't we don't teach them to dream. Mm -hmm. We don't condition to think to feel that it's okay to dream either, and we don't encourage their dreams. Mm -hmm. So how can you expect anything to work, anything to take off, anyone to believe in themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing I kind of realized was like, when you when you dream big, it, it people just look at you funny. They're like, oh, you, you know, like, like I told you that one day, if I said I wanted to be in the NBA, the normal reaction would be like, yeah, right. I'm but better then, than you or but, but then, is better than Yeah, you. but then when you think about it, like, what if this, what if this kid really wanted to be in the NBA? And then your reaction just killed that kid's dream. Yeah, And exactly. it's just like, people don't think about that. And I mean, it's so common for us to kind of laugh at things that sound outrageous. But a lot of the people who think like that, a lot of the people who have those outrageous ideas tend to be the ones that succeed because they actually follow through with it and they actually do what's necessary to achieve that so i mean i think that everybody's opinion matters i think we need the right type of people to be successful because well i mean i'm not gonna sit there and throw names out there but i've heard stories from you guys and friends from other friends that you know some native americans that do well for themselves they they have shit personalities let's be honest i mean i'm not can't really sugarcoat it but I mean, if some if pe- successful people, especially among Native Americans, if they get somewhere, 
and they end up being shit people. What is what's that? Mm-hmm. Is that really telling kids? You know? No, yeah, exactly. Because sure. uh, that that's exactly what you said. We need the right people to be successful because it seems to be the ones who don't give a shit about people's opinion. I mean, it, we don't it, have role models. Yeah, exactly. There's I mean, no there's there's some Native Americans who are successful, but we don't have role models. Yeah, and and it, and it's kind of like a lot like. I've witnessed it where people preach sobriety, and the next thing you know, they're out drinking. Yeah, they'll be on stage preaching sobriety, and then uh, a few hours later, <laughs> getting turned, and sitting it's like, in a what? bar with them taking shots. It's like what? <laughs> you know, and, and, I, I have been there, man. And it, and it kind of just like tears. It just tears everything apart because then you start getting confused. You're Shatters like, okay, that illusion. The one person who I did look up to all of a sudden is a hypocrite. So then it's like, okay, well, then it just might might cause that confusion where. Everybody they think of, yeah, like everybody they look up to, it. is gonna, it's gonna ruin that image for like everybody they look up when to. they find out that the hero's a lie. Like I remember, what, I don't know if you guys remember that episode of Hey Arnold, which was back in the day. Remember his uh, the baseball player? No, 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 the uh, the action hero, and he finally meets him, and he's a real piece of shit. Oh yeah, do you remember that episode? And he like <laughs> turns I into do. a bad boy, and he like throws on a leather jacket. Yeah, he's like pushing his little yeah. friend out of the way, <laughs> and he turns into a real asshole, like. uh I, I remember seeing that episode and I was like, holy fuck. Well, that, you know, I don't want to be like the that. Dream like, killer? yeah, well, yeah, like it, it was kind of a dream killer. Like, that's why I was always kind of scared to meet celebrities. I mean, some of them are all right, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, what, what if I meet, you know, my hero or whatever and he's a real piece of shit? Like, you know, um, I never really thought of myself as a role model growing up or whatever but you know kind of kind of now a piece of shit <laughs> yeah it's like you know if i was to become like you know some famous actor or you know some musician or whatever i definitely would not be a piece of shit like that like if somebody ran up and wanted to be like hey can i get a picture with you i'd be like hey all right yeah you know it doesn't matter what kind of mood i'm in if i'm if i'm in a real shit mood i'm still gonna take a picture with them did, did you... to, to kind of piggyback on that uh one of my good friends aloria Roan Eagle. I'm married to Reggie. Hey, Laurie, if you're watching this, but she was telling me the story that when they're making the movie Skins, they, they filmed the movie in Pine Ridge. Yeah. And I guess uh, she had friends who had met Graham Greene. Mm-hmm. And basically, he didn't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanted to make the movie and just be done with it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's terrible, you know? I mean, yeah. odds are there are people who just, hey, you know, that's Graham Greene. Hell yeah, you know? Because like, I thought Graham, I thought the world of Graham Greene, mm-hmm. you know? But I'm sure it's just like your story with the whole. Uh, well, it's, it's like what Jimmy C said: kill your idols, kill your heroes, because like you're you're gonna you're always gonna be let down by them. Like, who's your favorite NBA player right now? Mine. Yeah. Draymond Green. Okay, imagine if you like. He seems like an honorable dude. Seems like a good dude. But what if you met him and he was just like, I "Don't fucking know you. Get away from me." You'd be like, "Man, really?" Like you'd be crushed by that because like you look up to this dude like. He's, you know, like your favorite player, and you just realize, like, he really is just a horrible person. He just shatters Oh, well, let, let me rephrase that. He's my favorite player, but if I were to look up to any NBA player, it would probably have to be, I'm not going to lie, Andre Iguodala. Because, and imagine meeting him. Well, yeah, in the same instance. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and he was just, you know, completely dismissed you. Like, hey, man, I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's cool, you know. Oh, did, did, oh, right, cool, did, you, did you did you watch uh, Michael Rappaport did, like, a, a press run on First Take and that other guy's, I don't know the other guy's name, but um, he was basically on uh, featured on the shows for First Take and whatnot. Yeah. Well, he was talking about LeBron, how um, he said him and LeBron, like, have just, he has, like a, like, a really bad, like, feel for LeBron because he knew him. Like, okay, so, like, he broke down about how he wrote a book, Michael Rappaport, and he mentioned this in that book that when LeBron was a rookie after one of these uh, shows like uh, Michael Rappaport was talking with Jay-Z in the back of his 4040 club and all that anyways he leaves and LeBron comes up to him and he's like oh Michael Rappaport he was like because I was like at the peak of wherever he was at and then he was like you know you're one of my favorite stand-up comedians he's showing him love heavily and then he was like oh man nice to meet you and you know anyways fast forward like 10 years they were at the all-star game and um, Michael Rappaport is with his kids and he goes up to LeBron, and he, you know, he knew him from way back then. He always talked to him, and then he said in front of his kids, he goes, "Hey man, is that cool?" You know, he's talking, to him, and then LeBron just kind of just turned his back on him and walked away. God yeah. damn. So, and and that was like, you know, um, that what's that Shannon's dude name on there on first take? Shannon Sharp. Yeah. So like, oh, I hate that cause, dude. Because he was just like, because he's like rides LeBron like heavy. So, anyways, he asked him what, what he felt about that. Why that has that shitty ratings, you know? And and um, 
But like that Shannon was basically peeling. saying, like, even though he is like um who he is, like people come up to him all the time, they ask for a picture or whatever. I don't, does mean he's obligated to be a dick? About no, things. no. Well, that's what Shannon is saying is like, because that Shannon gets a lot of attention like that everywhere he goes. So basically, like he he'll always try to be in a good mood and, and be courteous to these people, or whatever. But he said for LeBron to do that, he said especially knowing you, like yeah, like yeah, he said that was like wrong of him, and that and that's something that like would probably piss anybody off if you are if you met this person like X amount of years ago, you guys know who each other are, and the next thing you know, it's just like that reminds me of a story I heard. Uh, you know, guys know who George Lopez is, right? I'm yeah. not sure if he's still relevant anymore, but I think who's that? that? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and in one of his stand-ups i was watching stand-up shows and he was talking about when he was younger the area he grew up in they're filming an episode of chips mm-hmm. you know this is at the peak of you know eric estrada who <laughs> i guess he's like the mexican george george lopez at the time i'm well sorry but but basically <laughs> like mexican yeah ba- basically <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> basically like yeah he, he was, was like he man. was Mexican. He was yeah. the man. Everybody grew, everybody grew up looking up to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess Eric Estrada didn't want to shake his hand. Damn. You know, here as a young kid, you know, he's like, oh, this is my hero. You know, and I'm sure at that time there are very few well-to-do Hispanic actors. Mm-hmm. You know, which makes it even more of a tragedy. But you know, he didn't want to shake his hand. Yeah. And George Lopez said that really motivated him to go out and just be successful. And I always, thought, I always kind of think about that, like, yeah. dang, you know, little things like that could really motivate the hell out of somebody. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, the person who asked that question, just, you know, you're gonna, you might come across something like that, but don't ever, don't ever let anybody not tell you not to have dreams. Yeah. Don't ever let anybody tell you not to have goals, because as Native Americans, we need more people like that. Yeah, we we definitely do. We really need to push people. Yeah, we, main, mainly the youth, we're the ones man. that help. We're the ones that hold each other down. Yeah, yeah. crabs it's like, in a bucket. I mean, honestly, exactly. I, I, I get I get like that sometimes with like fellow native artists. Sometimes I'm just like, man, this song's kind of like kind of weak. But I'm not gonna sit there and publicly like shame them. I mean, I, I always try to offer some kind of like criticism for people. Or I'll listen to it, and, I, and it's not like I'm immediately. Yeah, and then they call you a hater. For well, yeah, it. yeah, that's, a, that's the thing. Is oh man, why are you hating? Yeah, and, and that's somebody's why, jealous. Like that's why you can never. That's why people. That's why we don't progress either, is because we we have such low self esteem that we take everything to heart, and it's kind of sad because it's like okay, your podcast could be a little better. All right, well tell me how, and yeah. it's not even in a mean way or like a hurtful way. It's like I really want to know so we can improve it. Exactly. And but you know that's why I want feedback on all instead of offering constructive criticism. Half the time people just be like, "Oh, that's whack." Okay, well, what's whack about? It? I don't know. It's just whack. Okay, well, thanks for that. <laughs> well, let me take a look at the reservation sports in general. When you have a really great reservation basketball player, you know, sometimes they do get a little arrogant. You know, like we build them up. We they more people more or less build them up to fail. How gods are made. That's that's what uh Jimmy had another song like that. Yeah, but and then. You know, we don't, we don't, we set them up, we build them up, we give them this ego, we give them all this confidence. Mm-hmm. But in the bigger picture, which is life, we're not there. Mm-hmm. You know, we we know how to bring them up here, but we don't know how we can't keep them up there. Yeah, and a lot of people don't want to, um, they don't want to take that next level step because they're scared of it because yeah. they get so comfortable doing what they've always done that it's like, okay, what's next? Well, I don't know. Okay, do you want to know? Uh, not really. So you just want to stay where you're at the whole thing. You just want to be a baller on the res and legendary on the res. But I'm pretty sure for, like, for a young kid to say, hey, I want to play in the NBA, I'm sure he has more friends saying that's dumb, that's stupid, Yeah. more than he has people saying, you know, you got to work hard and you could get there someday. Mm-hmm. You hear yeah. that a lot, like not not even just as a kid either. Like even now, you know, you, you want to go out there and make something better yourself. Everybody's like, yeah, right. You know, they say some stupid shit like that. And it's like, come on, man. Or like, kids, what's wrong with bettering myself? Or when kids leave the reservation to go play college sports somewhere, oh, they're just going to come back. They're going to quit. It's like, why? No. Yeah. Or, or why? If somebody like aspires to like want to be famous. You know, like, man, I want. I really want to get out there and you know try and be an actor. And oh, you ain't no Adam Beach. <laughs> you ain't no Eddie Spears. Or, or the other thing too is like when 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 you start doing something, like everybody's just sitting back. Like if I was to do like a, a short film and I was acting in it. And it's my first time, whatever. I might want to be in it, but then most of them will be sitting back, like. Why do you got to act in it? Why can't you just direct? Like, well, I'm just saying, like, if, if, <laughs> exactly, saying, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. But, but then, when, but then, when people are watching it, they'll be sitting back, like, holy fuck, why is this guy putting himself in his own movie? He's not that good. Fuck, you could just tell he's like, 
not even into it or you know like <laughs> just constantly criticize just try to find everything wrong with yeah. it <laughs> but then but then when you keep going when you keep it's 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 the saddest thing because you they treat it as native people i am guilty of this too but as native people we feel the need that everybody needs to impress us for some damn reason we feel like we have to be impressed by whatever somebody's doing and, not and me you, you especially <laughs> I'm not I'm not that type of person man but like some people they really get I'm like, always supportive <laughs> man yo know, I ain't gonna lie I kinda I feel that way but I look at it from the perspective of like I want you to do better yeah. you know like where you're at right now that's good but I feel like you can do better yeah and, and, and it's just like uh, it's not about like like I, I know what you're getting at it's not about like impressing me it's just when you ask for my opinion on something and I tell you, tell you my opinion on it. You yeah. know, it may not agree with what you're trying to do, like as far as like music or something, yeah. or like people's art. You know, because I can't, I can't tell you how to do your music because you're gonna do your music the way you're gonna do your yeah. music. You know, like I can give you like little, like I can give you my feedback and tell you what I want to hear from it, but it may not be what you want to hear. You know, so yeah. everybody you know, wants you to know, be like honest. A lot of the time, like, like you, yeah, like um. I just try to be honest with everyone, man. Like Every, I, everybody wants you to be honest, but nobody wants you to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like nobody wants you to be completely honest. <laughs> well, see, and, and, and that's, it's that's good, but and and that's something that like when you when like when you try to tell me it'd be cool to do this or be cool to do that, it's it's like it's a it's it's really cool, but at the same time, um, if my ideas are wax through, just say it, bro. <laughs> yeah. <I'm kidding. laughs> no, like like when you like okay, so something that you might hear in it. And in the reality of things, like, it just won't sound like it fits. But to you, it fits. It might be, it might be on a different tempo, or it might see, be. On see, see, that's how much that's how much I believe in you. Like, I feel like you can make anything sound good. <clears throat> but see, I mean, it's like okay, so if you were like add this sound in it, and it, and it sounded cool on its own, but not in the mix that it's in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it might like if I was to take this sample and go put it into something else and build around that, it'd be cool, but not with this. So like I always listen to ideas, but if it don't fit what I'm doing at the moment, I'm like, I don't throw get the it away. Hell out of here. But just go, <laughs> just go, just get out of here. You know? But at the same time, it's just like thought you were gonna be helpful. Like a lot of like yeah, like a lot of people <laughs> get Made caught up, caught up in um, <laughs> like they they think everybody needs to impress them, you know? Yeah. And that, and that's one of the worst mentalities ever because you're like, well, I'm not impressed by it. It's like okay, well, do you really think I care what you think? <laughs> And and it's not like in an arrogant, cocky way. It's just a simple fact. Like, I still I'm still gonna put it out. I'm still gonna do it how I want to do it. Yeah. I mean, but it's I, it's not like I'm sitting here trying to impress everybody and be like, Pierre, do you like it? No. <laughs> what do I need to change about? Okay, I'll go do that right now. <laughs> you know, and it, and it's like, no, fuck that, man. Because when you start compromising like your art and your craft for other people's opinions, that's when you realize like, okay, this is probably not for me. Well, here's the thing you got to look at. If you're gonna ask somebody about something, be prepared for honesty. Yeah. Exactly. And the, the other the, the thing, the getting on that topic right away before I forget about it because I got ADD. But there's a lot of yes men everywhere, which encourages whackness, which encourages negativity. Dude, seriously, I have talked about this. Over Poor quality. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, bro, what do you think of this? Fuck yeah, man. Fuck it up. No one, no, no, fire, bro. no one damn well. It's not. <laughs> but uh, like. A lot of people they they want to see you leave it at that because they could offer advice that would make it sound better, but they're gonna be like, "Oh, it's good, it's good." Knowing it's whack, they'll probably take that idea and improve on it themselves. But, but also, <laughs> knowing it's whack, they're gonna keep telling you it's good, so you keep doing it at that level, so you keep sounding whack. But they're gonna keep telling you it's good, so that they they think they can get like a head start on you. Like, well, I'm still, I'm gonna do better while they're still sitting there thinking they're doing good. I remember we used to talk about this quite a bit, but you know. Um... You know, when somebody does a song and they put something up, it's like they're tagging the same fucking 50 yep. people in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that gets stupid. I mean, I Bunch mean, of fire I can... emojis and shit. <laughs> I mean, of course, those same people are going to like it. <laughs> of course, those same 60, 70 people are going to like it. They like the last one. What? But I mean, they're not good. They're not putting money in your pocket. Yeah. They're not getting you a record. They're deal. not actually listening to it, honestly. Because well, I, I like I, I know I'm guilty of it sometimes. I'll like, you know, on Facebook just give somebody a like and keep moving you know <laughs> just, it's, it's 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 bad to do that i understand that but you know every now and then i'll give it a listen and then sometimes it's not worth it i mean just do what i do just don't listen to stewart at all man i mean 
I've told him from the beginning I like to keep our friendship and the music separate <laughs> because I feel it could be better for both of us in the long run. I don't like to hurt my friends that way. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. like, well, like, remember what Farron was saying earlier? He's like, y'all don't say shit until it's on Spotify. Because I can't listen to you when I'm playing 2K on, <laughs> on SoundCloud. And he's like, oh, yeah. he's like, my boy Stuart James got it on Spotify. But, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of one of those situations where do you want to keep going on SoundCloud, tagging the same people, getting the same 100 something? Oh, man, he made me that laugh. Really. Or, do you, or do you want to go on Spotify where you can reach a bigger audience where you look more professional doing what you do? Where you you could just you look way more professional to people. Yeah. Like when when you when somebody's at a show and they're like, oh man, check me out. I'm on Apple Music, iTunes. It just makes you want to check them out because like, okay, well if they're on there, they must be doing something right. But when it, I mean, it sounds kind of lame when people are like, check out my Spotify, check out my Facebook. And, and I mean, it's like I was like, check out my Facebook, check out my SoundCloud. Uh, what, yeah, SoundCloud. What's another one? Um, Bandcamp. What's, what's that other one? Yeah, Bandcamp. <laughs> that's the one. Oh man. It, it's it like I don't, I don't, stupid. I don't hear like I don't go on these websites yeah. at all. Like I'm always on Spotify when I listen to music. Like Facebook, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't, don't want to download SoundCloud just to listen to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You have to, you have to go into your app store. You it takes a space on my phone, dog. I'm trying to play it's Candy not. Crush at work, and I, I got like... Spotify <laughs> taking up my goddamn. <laughs> I only have 200 kilobytes left. I'm not wasting it on you. <laughs> and and that, that, like, man, it, it, like I said, it just brings a whole new level of professionalism when you're on those things or like even when you're on, uh, yeah, like Spotify or Apple Music. Like, it just looks more professional. Like, if you had a resume, it'd be, it'd, that's just like your impressiveness. You know, it's, it's like one of, the, one of the key points in your resume instead of just being like, check me out on SoundCloud, bro. Well, when I'd be out there drinking and stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it. But, like, you know, like in Minnesota and stuff like that, or other places where I'd be you drinking and stuff, I, uh, I'll uh i bring up my phone and uh, I'll be showing people on Spotify your music and stuff. Oh, he's on Spotify? It's like, fuck yeah, he is. <laughs> Just check out his YouTube channel, and, and, too. And, like, oh, yeah, no, it's on Spotify? <laughs> and, and nobody, nobody, like, nobody showed me. How to get on like that stuff i had to google it i had to there's like a few distribution exactly. services and it's like but nobody wants to show you that shit. even though nope. there's people who have it on there already they won't show you how they won't tell you how because then it's like oh you're gonna be on spotify too and it's kind of like um damn <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> all right cool you guys don't want to show me all right i'll find out myself and that's that's really what separates like the men from the boys in a sense who's the ones that take that extra step to go and find out what's needed to progress instead of just waiting for somebody to do something for them i hate that shit well i mean if you're if you want to get anywhere you got to go get it yeah I mean, that is true you can't expect somebody just to give you the keys i mean well we wouldn't be doing this right now if i didn't you know, look up all the sh- shit necessary to be doing it also if we'd we didn't be believe in it we wouldn't be doing it yeah, if exactly. you didn't believe in it you wouldn't be sitting here in front of the mic Ethan would Ethan probably just post a status saying, can anybody help me do this? Just be, still be sitting there waiting for a reply. Yeah, it'll get like three likes, and then that'll <laughs> you, be the end of it. You could be that person. I'll get a notification in a year about the three-like status that I had up a year ago about, you know, your starting a podcast. Yeah, Time hop. Share your right? memories. Yeah, the time hop. Is, what the fuck is this? Podcast. We were going to do a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> fuck. No. Really, though, in all, in all honesty, uh, uh, I do want to... Uh, I do want to thank Matt Ferno because that that's one dude that really helped us do a lot of stuff. A lot. Yeah. He helped us with like uh, like the Facebook advertising and you know uh, a lot of the camera work. He's and, one of the uh, rare people that would share info with. Yeah. Him. He'll help. He'll help you. Uh, Odds are maybe he had to go through the same thing you guys are going through. Exactly. And the people who really had to grind for it are willing to give back so that they don't have, so that somebody else who's passionate about it doesn't have to go through the same shit they had to go through. Basically. Dude, I always tell people, because like when people hit me up on Facebook and they're like, holy fuck, I'm bored. I'm like, you got a computer? Yeah. You got Wi Fi? Yeah. What kind of phone you got? You got a good camera? Yeah. Fucking make YouTube videos. <laughs> you know, like, it's not that hard. I see yeah. people going on YouTube and like they're reviewing shit they buy from Walmart. Or, or they're, uh, you know, reviewing uh, restaurants live or whatever. Yeah, there's you know, a lot it, you can do. Yeah, there's days. a lot you can do with just that phone in your hand. Well, and, and, and Logic had a really good point. He said, you have the whole world in your hands. You can learn anything about anything in this world with this hand. And instead, you want to just scroll. 
Said you want to start shit with strangers and look up pictures <laughs> of cats. <laughs> and, and, and it's so crazy because, like, he, he said he learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube on his phone. He learned how to do, like... He learned all those algorithms? Yeah, he learned, like, all that like, shit. Just, like, himself. seven of them? And now he just kills nine. it with the Rubik's Cubes. Like, or nine? Like, I don't know if anybody's seen that video where he's, like, freestyling while fixing a Rubik's Cube. Is that on, like, Sway in the Morning? No, it's on Big Boy. That yeah. power, power... or I don't know. But anyways... And then he goes and does it again, but he closes his eyes and solves it while he's freestyling. I'm sorry, that, you kind of give me a look like, Sway, what the fuck's that? You know? <laughs> no, I'm going to give you that look because it's like, fuck, you don't know nothing. <laughs> no. I always have to educate you. But, said that. Well, i got to teach you. <laughs> but, Listen here. But just think of, like, he, he's able to do those crazy mind-blowing things just by learning off his phone. Well, I, I learned how to play guitar from fucking YouTube. Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I learned, I learned, I learned I how to fix tie up YouTube. I don't know if you call that boring. I mean, like my brother helped. My brother and I helped a little, but I looked up how to do it, and like it pissed me off. But I'll be damned if I'm gonna wear a clip on at work. Word. So, all, so everybody listen yeah. out there, learn how to do a tie, especially especially if you're a guy. You never know when that time's gonna come when you're gonna have to make a tie. Or you never know when you're gonna get married and that's your first time like tying a tie. Fuck bow ties, by the way. Just buy the ones that clip around I would your neck. Probably I, do that. I, I wanted to get a bow tie. Fuck a bow tie. What? Bow ties are so like... So if I had started doing a bow tie, you'd be a little disappointed in me? No. No. But you'd just be like, fuck his bow tie. I'd just be like, fuck bow ties. All right, you better take that out before it comes in his house. <laughs> <laughs> you want to sit in the car? Do you want to go home? <laughs> Pierre, come out with his bow tie. Ah, you take that off until you get to work. Who do you, you think is a better actor? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there. Will Smith or Denzel? Wow. I'm talking all around, not certain ones. I'm talking all Denzel. around. Denzel. There you go. Will Smith. Easily, Denzel easily, because Will Smith. my friend Travis Shaneborn, Travis, uh, he said it best, Will Smith, because just Will Smith in yep. all of his movies. Yep. You know, we, we, we were talking about Suicide Squad. We were talking about other than the fact that it was horrible, but he was like, it was good for a little bit, but then Will Smith just became Will Smith after a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he's pretty good about being that awkward, funny. And, yeah. But it's, it's really to some of his career. Just like Jason Statham. I always and, said Jason Statham just... And Denzel boy. Washington. No. Den- <laughs> Denzel, he could be funny. He could be like a really funny person. Will but Smith. at the same time... <laughs> I, like, I'll bring this up. You can't. I can't see Will Smith. I could see Denzel playing the character in Seven Pounds. I can't see Will Smith playing the character of tra- in Training Day. Could you I see can't. Will Smith doing a, no. Remember the Titans? I can't. I, I would, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you wouldn't take him serious. You'd be like, "Come on, when are you gonna make us laugh, Will? When are you gonna make us laugh?" But, but one thing, I, one thing I do appreciate about Will Smith, I'm not gonna lie, is he doesn't have to sit there and make a big speech like Denzel does have to sometimes. But at the same time, look, at, look at Training Day. That's my big point. That's my big Whack. selling point. He was a villain, but he was the he was the most likable villain you'll ever see because you're like, man, this fucker's badass. Fuck then you realize how big of a piece he is. Then you're like. Why do you gotta be the piece, man? And later you on, know? he does John Q, and you're like, yeah, you're like you're fucking with my emotions, Denzel. Yeah. But but like in training, that's what I mean. Like he's the most likable villain ever because you, the whole movie, you're like, fuck yeah, man, I want to roll with this dude. Then you realize he's a piece of shit, and you're like, no, why? From that aspect, I yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like Will Smith has only played the villain like once and barely on Suicide Squad. He was a bad guy, but at the same time, he was like the most lighthearted bad guy I've ever seen. Denzel was only the villain once. But at the same time, but he like, killed it in, in there, training day. Would you he really consider it. Deadshot a villain, though? No, nah, you can. Cons- well, technically, Anti-hero. technically, he's a bad guy. Anti-hero. But I mean, so what if he kills people for money? I mean, he's yeah. trying to feed his daughter, man. Word. But <laughs> I think I just I have to say Denzel because I like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I could see Denzel doing. You know who's movies. underrated? Jeremy Renner. Yeah. His performance mm-hmm. in Wind River had me a little choked up. He was in the town. He was in the Avengers. The Town is my favorite movie probably ever. I like Ben Affleck. Dude, he's a, he's a boss. The fact I, that he can direct. He has an Academy Award winning movie as a director. I and he him. starred in it. What about, what about Casey Affleck? I liked him in Gone Baby Gone. We were talking Gone. about Ben, so. <laughs> I like Casey Affleck in Gone Baby Gone. Well, guess who directed that? Was it Ben? Ben. Ben Affleck. Yeah, that was his first movie. Casey. Did you guys watch uh, Manchester by the Sea? No, I got it, that was such it. a depressing movie. I couldn't finish it. I, it I mean, was I so actually, fucking depressing. I actually finished it. Yeah, I finished it wrong. And, it, and was it was so fucking bad. You were hoping the best for him, and you realize he's just 
comf- like comfortable doing that shitty life that he's in. He could have had love. He could have had a new start. You know, like he could have, but instead he 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 can't let go of the past. Like he's just he's just letting his past haunt him, man. Yeah. He's just like one of those people, and I felt like that before. You know, like fuck, I deserve this, and just kind of stayed down. You know, he. Oh man, that movie is just depressing. <laughs> I, I was Christ. watching it. Not, it's good it, though. I'm not gonna lie, it's good. But and I literally had an empty feeling inside. Like really, man. Like it made me like. Think of your most depressing moment in life, and that's what that whole movie just kind of throws at you. Pretty much. And it just lingers there the whole movie. And like, it was cool because, like, at the beginning, like, uh, he, you know, he's in the bar or whatever, and he starts talking yeah. to those guys. He starts fucking yeah. beating the <laughs> shit out of them. And then you're just thinking, what the fuck is this guy's problem? Then you realize and then halfway a... through the movie, you're like, oh, my God. He's just a sad sack of bones. Come here, you motherfucker. Give me a hug. Like, basically, yeah. So he's, he's I'm a so piece sorry piece of shit. this happened to you. Like, uh, man. A little bit. But I think um, that movie definitely was probably the most depressing movie I've ever seen. Nah, yeah. you, did you ever watch Precious? Oh, God. Holy yeah. shit. If you ever want to watch this heat movie, that's Are depressing. you talking, like, depressing or just, like, You stole wow. my man. Yeah. Or just, no, okay. All the above. Depressing or fucked up? All the above. I think, well, no, okay, so depressing to me, like, when you watch Precious, it's out of pity, mostly. You're it's, like, damn, it's... that's fucked up, that happened to her, so you feel bad for her. That Manchester by the Sea will grab you by the balls and be like, bro, sit the fuck down, I'm gonna depress the shit out of you. Like, you literally get a sad feeling watching you think, that movie. You think you've ever felt sad? You don't feel bad for him. I'm gonna show you sad. You don't feel bad for him, <laughs> you feel sad with him. That's how that's how that movie. It's, it's one of those movies where you want to, where you don't want to like sit down and comfort him. Like it's gonna be all right. No, fuck that. You want to sit down and like cry with him. Oh, because, like, because basically <laughs> it's about like, what, what happened again. Remember? Like, it, oh yeah, he he uh, he burnt he, his house down. Yeah, he with his daughter. He one put of his daughter more down. wood on his in in the fireplace, but he forgot to put the shield up, and it burnt his house down. And it burnt the the house down with his kids inside. So his wife just couldn't forgive him. He yeah. Didn't, he didn't let it go. And it just eats at him the whole movie. And it's so, it's like sad. Dude, the one part, like, I got really choked up on is when he, like, sees his wife in that oh, alleyway. Oh, and she's pregnant. And Yeah, she's pregnant. And, uh, like, she she tells him that she forgives him. And he's just, like, trying oh, to. Oh, man. He's just trying to, like, hold back those tears. And, like, oh, fuck, man. That was just a sad ass part. It's almost like he's, like, no, you don't. Like, he's still, <laughs> he's still being, like, why you no know, he's just like why why you know he yeah. you could see it on his face like why why would you forgive me yeah like after what i did it's why like would everybody you else me? moved on except him yeah but yeah that movie that movie is fucking sad and it's like i said it's one of those movies you don't feel bad for the character you feel sad with them. i just went in the bathroom laid down on the floor <laughs> curled up like i turned the shower on so nobody could hear me cry after god <laughs> like a, like a true rape victim doris, doris on facebook Doris, she said, "Y'all watch Shameless." Don't even get us started. Oh Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we know somebody like that. Can everybody knows. To one of those a, everybody knows a Frank Gallagher. Though. I always <laughs> said that's Ethan. That's you. You're Frank Gallagher. <laughs> my my cousin Amanda. Not I love so her to death. Anymore. Hopefully she's listening. But she has a mom that reminds me of Frank Gallagher. And like I used to tease like all those kids were them. Like, cause I mean I'm not gonna. It's probably not my place to put people's business out there, but. You know, she had to grow up a little it faster. It was similar. A little faster than yeah. some people would. And, like, you know, she was Fiona. I used to joke around and say, you're Fiona because you're just fucking everybody, you know? <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I love you, man. But that's, it's a joke, obviously, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. But, like, we used to joke around. But, like, like I said, I think we've all know, we all know Frank Gallagher. We all know uh, Fiona. We all know a lip, you know? I thought the most P.O.S., for people that don't know what POS is, piece of shit moment, had to be when, uh, remember when he got that credit card in his son's name? <laughs> and then, no, and then no, he finally no, gets he, cre- he got a credit card in everybody's name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody bought Fiona's name. And then and then he, like, goes in that store and he's like, gives that credit, oh, right this way, Liam. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, right this way, Mr. Gallagher. Yeah. Please, Mr. Gallagher is my Call father. Me Call me Liam. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy fuck. <laughs> and Liam's only, like, two. Yeah. And then they find out, like, Liam really is their kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the writers came up with that, but Christ, man, that was such a good episode, man. 
Remember we were talking about that like early, like halfway through the the series or whatever, like before. Anyways, we were talking about how like you just hope Fiona like actually settles down and stops being a hoe. She and doesn't. You, yeah, and, you, and she just continues to do it. And you're kind of like, after a while, you just you just don't give a shit about her at all. Because yeah, like first, like in season seven, she just discovers Tinder and just starts boning yeah. <laughs> endlessly. Like at first, you feel bad. You're like, damn, I wish this. I hope this girl like stops and settles down and stops. Like she has so much hearts. going for herself. I, I downloaded but... the Tinder app hoping I could find her on there. Man, holy shit! But it, I mean, like, all remember, the dude, dude central around here. But... <laughs> remember, she gets like she gets married to that one guy, and then uh, you, you know she breaks his heart. Oh and then, man, and you're just like, fuck this bitch. Like, and you realize she's just never gonna change. I think it was after. After the third season, I started. Oh, when she messed around her. with that dude's brother. Yeah. yeah. Like I fucking do. I just really, I don't know. I didn't like her after that. She was yeah. just a bitch. I was like, man. It's not just because she cheated, but she, she was just, conscious about what she's doing. Yeah. Too. yeah. Like, uh, yeah, she just turns into a real piece of shit after a while. Like hoism. Like just kind <laughs> of. Not only that, but she just starts to get selfish and yeah. shit. Yeah. Like fuck this family. Look at all I did for it. Shameless. I'm gonna go do my own thing. Some girls just like being a hoe, man. I mean. You know, maybe not everybody grow, grows it, I guess. Kind of like being an adult. Like some people, you could be 20 years old, be an adult, or you could be 34 years old and still be a little kid, you know? Maybe it's one of those things. I don't really have a problem with hoes. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just generally talking about the show. <laughs> just not, not, you know, if, if there's and a person out there that like, don't, that's don't. like Fiona Gallagher, I'd <laughs> You'd probably, go for it. yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably get oh, my heart sure, broken by sure. her easily. <laughs> She could break my heart any day. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> she could break my heart every day of the week as long as I'm in that. For... No. Holy Eeps. shit. Crawl up in this. Eeps. Eeps. Crawl up in this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and when we uh, talk about, like, hoism and all that, it's not like we don't sit there and think every girl is a hoe or anything like that. No, no, no. There are some good girls out there. There's a lot of good girls. It's not around here. It's, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, okay, so no, I'm not gonna get on that subject. <laughs> oh well, shit. Sorry in advance. <laughs> what what's another topic we can discuss? <clears throat> I don't know, man. Sh- Rick shame. and Morty. All oh, Rick and Morty. No, we were talking about uh, social media earlier, remember? Oh from social media is the devil, man. Like how people can live a se- second life on there? Dude. Yeah, like like I said before, I met some people who are just blowing up all over Facebook and in real life it's like you're a piece of shit. You are a like, sad piece of shit. Or it's like, you literally do nothing all day. You, it's like that Hobson <laughs> song when he's like, you don't read any books, you don't draw, you don't ball, you literally do nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, oh, God, phone drop. Phone drop. It's well, there's, a, there's a... It's um, Apple. It happens. Yeah. Anyways, those damn apples. <laughs> Apple a day keeps the doctor yeah. away. At least my phone ain't blowing up. Cotton. Mine's mine's still here. Mine still. ain't either. <clears throat> Anyways, so yeah, um, <laughs> back to the subject of you know people who Facebook famous. Um, I really, really forgot what I was gonna say. That, that's it's damn deep, Apple pretty. products just they just got throw me you on off. Just got me on another level. <laughs> just captivating. No, they just pissed me off so much that I really need to talk about how goddamn <laughs> shitty they are <laughs> and all the things that they stole from Samsung. Mm-hmm. Not like so in the i in the in the iPhone X. Their screen is Samsung. Most of your OS is Samsung. I could leave. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you stay right there. You stay right there and get real comfy. <laughs> You're in this for the long haul, man. No. I mean, if we're talking phone products, it's I like Android. I, I mean, I've had yeah. a, I've had an iPhone at one time, but I just like Android. I like Androids. I just you know, and to me it doesn't matter. I I'd, I'd go for an iPhone, but I just I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't like I'm not gonna pay like fucking nine hundred ninety nine dollars for a goddamn iPhone X, you know? To see the emojis better. No, you want to know? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you to know like the, interactive emojis and, and facial the truest recognition. Truest meme I've ever seen. Okay. It had to be the one where it said, "Oh, the iPhone X is finally out." That means the iPhone Seven or whatever <laughs> dropped down to like six ninety nine, which means the iPhone Five <laughs> dropped to. Something like so I could finally afford the iPhone four or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I can get the iPhone four for fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Online garage sale. But I mean, hardly <laughs> used comes with the case. Yeah. Like if you like not I, stolen or me, barely me, any I, scratches. I just really like the simplicity of Apple. That's what I like. Just Simple because mind. 
It's not about being simple minded. <laughs> I mean, it's just the simple fact that it's simple. I just, yeah, and so for what? simple people. Because I got a lot going on in life. I'm just kidding. <laughs> got a lot going on in life. He, he doesn't need a complicated phone yeah. to make things <laughs> any worse. <laughs> I don't need to complicate my life anymore. <laughs> then, it's, then it already is. Yeah, but you're no, right. Okay. You're but the other thing, too, is if you look at, like, Apple, their cameras are... I think the cameras blow the water, blow the, the Samsung and no. it's out of the water. And you know what? For people like you, too, because you guys are really into mm-hmm. photography, things like that wouldn't matter. But for somebody like me, I just... Yeah. I just want the newest, latest, greatest I just want to get these, these, these dick pics out as quick as I can, and Android seems to work better with that. I've got a better processor, so I can send out 10 at one time, fast as fuck. And this wide angle really helps. <laughs> no, but I mean... Wide angle really sells it, man. But I mean, like, I think that's just how it is when it comes to phones. People yeah. don't... People would rather take the newest, latest, greatest thing over functionality. And I like the stabilizer in, in iPhones, you know? They got that little, because you can run with it, and it'll still look a little bit better than Android, you know? Yeah, we got a stabilizer on ours, Oh, finally? Too. You guys copied that <laughs> had, iPhone? Had. Copied that? We've had. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so. I Next just, question. You want to? Ooh. Uh, <laughs> you got 12 minutes left on that space. All right. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just, uh. But yeah, uh, Stuart's working on some new music now. Everybody, yeah. pay, stay attention. Pay attention. So stay um, tuned in. Yeah, we got some. Uh, Stuart's got some wild ass hits coming your way. And uh, got if you if you haven't already, check it out on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. From from Apple, what he's told me, he applied Google it. Google Play. He, he applied at McDonald's to like pass out mixtapes along with the. No, meals. that's old school, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all digital now. Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. No <laughs> we just blow up people's social medias. <laughs> <laughs> we just tag you 50 times just over, spam. dog. We just yeah. spam your news feed. <laughs> no, but, I mean, this Quick is why we YouTube. create our, this is why we'd rather create our own platform is because I can plug in my own music anytime I want and, and talk about it rather than go on to somebody else's platform and sit there and try to advertise it with them with without the judgment of, like, really, you're going to do that? You know? Oh, you're going to plug yourself on my show? Really? <laughs> really? Uh, disregard show? last statement. Yeah. So... That that's why we. I created. mean, if anything, you're a guest like on our show, you know. <laughs> so oh. I mean, you kind of like. The- oh, so you guys want to record off the phone, huh? You guys want to do voice recordings this time, huh? You guys really want to do that? Right? This is as real as it gets, people. <laughs> you guys want to? You guys want to? You know, I'll just take this mixer in the back mm-hmm. and just let you guys figure it out from there. You know, air hug, air hug. <laughs> But, I got, I but hey, but let's not do this now. I got us. <laughs> you you always do this in front of people. <laughs> you always make this about Stuart. Whenever there's an audience, <laughs> it's always about Stuart. That's all I do is get in front of audiences. <laughs> That's all I do is perform. Oh, I remember the last show? This guy, oh, man. So, oh, fuck, Stuart's really getting mad at everyone. Christ. What now? What did you do now, so Stuart? He just blew up about the whole no dapple thing, man. Holy shit. I didn't blow up. <laughs> you might as well have. Holy the, shit. The songs that I did were... Did you were, forget that you were in Bismarck? Or? <laughs> no, I knew exactly where I was okay. at. Okay. He knew exactly what the hell did he you was know, doing. Like, those people were from Bismarck? Yeah, I knew, I knew exactly okay. what I was doing. So, you know, I've always been the type to just kind of take chances. And a lot of people liked it, but... Um, no, at this last show, it was a heavily white crowd, and I did a lot of native-based songs. Like the material and content was about the oppression of Native Americans. So, it, you know, some of the lyrics were dropping about Christopher Columbus, like the truth behind it. And I said, I, you know, education system has been altering the truth. I wish they told what happened back in 1492, when children had been murdered by Columbus and his crew. They slaughtered all the women so they couldn't reproduce. And it was just like that's what basically what the verse was about, and each song had its own like energy to it. But when I was doing that acapella for the Christopher Columbus thing, I got like I started getting mad. I started making myself mad thinking about it. So like the energy picked up, and I was like damn near yelling the rest of that verse. Energy and, picked up for you, the tension picked <laughs> up for the audience, and everybody was everybody kinda, was kind of like it was like this. It was like oh, okay, it's guess cool. And then they heard the Christopher Columbus thing, and then they were like, uh, what's going on here? And then, I don't know, basically, but I, I had to, like, joke around with the crowd. I was like, okay, everybody lighten up. I was like, just chill out. I'm not, like, anti-white people. And, it, and everybody just Did kinda... you tell them you were, like, German and you were... Yeah, I, I said that very <laughs> yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah, I said yeah. I was, like, half-breed and all, but 
it was just so awkward for the audience because they were like they didn't know what the hell to think they were like okay why is this dude like doing this right now i came to see a hip-hop why, why, show and why then, is he coming at us like yeah, yeah. <laughs> my god why is he yelling at us right now and the whole point of that was just to say like open up your mind to other people's points of views and, and try to understand their struggles try to understand whatever so it was like it was kind of funny though just realizing how these people were like getting so just the way they reacted to everything that yeah. you said man like tell, the... tell me what that that nigerian guy said to you outside the show oh god what did he say again <laughs> he worked like holy he come, shit. yeah you come outside <laughs> and you're standing there you look at me holy shit man <laughs> <laughs> what's up man and, oh man he's oh what did he say again the guy really knows how to oh yeah like that the, that guy really knows how to keep an audience. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. He's like, he got pretty intense in there. <laughs> oh, man, it was freaking funny, though. Like, he, he was talking to me outside for the longest time, man. And then, like, it got really awkward because I have no idea who this guy was, but he was, like, getting all personal and everything. <laughs> and then he's like, yep, got a girl on the way. He's like, you know how that is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. And then, like, he was just standing there. Just kind of like nodding his head like that waiting and then that girl starts like coming around the corner or whatever and then he's like talking to her or whatever and i'm like oh god it's finally over and then he, and then he like i'm still standing there or whatever and i kind of pull my phone out i'm looking at it and he walks up i want to introduce you to somebody <laughs> <laughs> this man i just met him but he's going to be very very important one day and i was like hey <laughs> and then that girl's looking that girl's looking at me and she's like is this awkward for you? I was like, it's really fucking awkward. <laughs> and she was like, yeah. And then I just kind of walked away. But She's like, uh, this guy? Yeah, like, <laughs> really? <laughs> this scrub ass dude? Normally it's the girl making the guy work to get some, but in that case it was kind of like he was making her work to get some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. He must have just oh, been man. dangling <laughs> in the knee then. Jesus. That yeah. was just ridiculous, man. <laughs> Dude was all iced out and everything. Was... The DJ story about the strawberry. Oh, that Remember, story never gets told to me. I'm not gonna say names, but at that same show, this guy was performing, and then I was standing outside. I was enjoying a black and mild, and these three guys say no to drugs. People say no to drugs. I try to stay away from nicotine, but that's an addiction. Yeah. Anyways, so these guys come walking in, and they and they go downstairs. Not even a minute later, they come walking out, and then one dude's like laughing. He's just like. Ah. I paid five dollars for that shit, and he just kept walking. And then he just kept laughing the whole way down the street. I was like, "Damn!" Did you get self conscious? No, they nah. they came back. From oh, okay, Stewart, all right. Though. Yeah, well, they like, were they were they were. I think they were in there for my set, but yeah, they they came back when Stewart was performing, which so, is kind of. I remember you telling me a story about like you guys killed that this one show, and people like people would rather watch you than watch people watch the people you that were following you guys yeah so <laughs> basically at a lot of shows uh shout out to tyson austin uh the other half of the council we did some shows in denver uh and albuquerque we opened up for nappy roots in fargo like two years ago last year whatever anyways at these shows uh, there would be multiple openers and we were like always first for like every show they always put us on first I still get that treatment which is messed up but whatever you gotta, settle you know, down, settle you gotta down. earn your points in life um, so we would do our show we would just get super hype and then we would end up killing it and then it was just like the next people that got on it was kind of like everybody was like oh there's another one and then you know anyways towards like that when we're in the audience we get done whatever we'd be walking around people would come up and be like oh man you guys were so dope why'd you guys open up and then it was you know, they're like you're way better than those other people that are going and it was like why'd you guys have to go on first like we'd be hearing all kinds of comments like that so those are always fun you know fun little shows that you know we get that type of I mean the recognition is there but you can't you kind of have to feel bad for people you guys were like oh yeah it's uh, like how do you follow <laughs> that up it's for two people that just gave their all into one set you know it's like you can't really yeah see that's the thing about like like when I go to your guys' shows and everything too is when <clears throat> oh man oh I just feel bad yeah <laughs> I feel bad for everybody like before and after that has to perform when you're there I mean like the local people yeah uh, not all of them and I don't care if you think I'm talking shit, because I am. <laughs> but <laughs> At least he can admit it, people. <laughs> the fuck they going to do, fight me? But, 
<laughs> when when Stewart gets on that stage and like you know like with Tyson and even even by himself or whatever, like oh man, like the way he kills the shows and everything, dude. Like I, I just feel bad for everybody that has to follow him up because you can just see it. You can just see it when they get up on stage and all like hey, and they're really uh, oh what's the word? Intimidated. Everybody want to do, but nobody want to do it. Well, yeah, like like, like it's like. They they don't they're confused they're like they don't know how to go as hard as that because they don't they're not about the music in the way that you know still they're just about there it. for fun no they're there for uh, the popularity man it's kind of one of those situations where if you have Eminem opening a show and you have Lil Yachty closing it out yeah that's not fair yeah that's pretty much how it is I mean it's, I hate, I mean I'm not sitting there just calling people whack but that's just really what it is because you got one person who's looking to just rip the crowd to shreds with like lyrical abilities and energy and heart and everything you say you believe in but then you got these you know you get other people coming up and they're like uh fuck your bitch uh bitch i'm rich it's like okay are you rich are you rich did you really did you really f my woman you know if not then you know you're lying and it's kind of like i've seen i've seen like not seen but i've heard at these shows too when they're up there on stage and they're rapping about getting money and I got it like this and I got it like that and um what is it what's another one uh sign, signing girls titties after shows and everything like that it's like no you need to sit down my god honey no <laughs> <laughs> like you need you need to chill but I mean that, that, that that's kind of like a heavy thing when you got people who are going up there doing what they hear on the radio and you got somebody else who's coming in doing something that's from the heart doing something original and with a purpose behind it when you got a purpose behind what you're doing nobody can fuck with that like if you like tech nine comes in the room you know he's gonna get some shit done you gotta be passionate about it if he goes in the studio if he goes into the studio you know tech nine's dropping some crazy shit and if you see like designer a little yachty going in this, I use those I use those guys as, as examples because. <laughs> <laughs> I'll run it back, run it back. <laughs> so it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you know you don't you you know you know what to expect from people, but when you have somebody who comes in that you don't know about, somebody who you never heard of, and they just rip the shit down and they're speaking from the heart. You're going to fuck with that more than, you know, like, oh, I fucked you a bitch. Okay, I heard that on the radio a hundred times. Show me something else. So, But it's just like, that's the, that's the element of surprise when people don't know who you are and you come into a, like a packed house and nobody knows you, but you have that ability to just catch Kind of like Joel Embiid. Yeah. When he shows up, no one, no one's anticipating him. No one's game No one knows what him. to do against him. Just and because... like, all of a sudden, like, he goes off, he kills it, and it's yeah. like... Hell yeah, but then next time around, people are expecting something from him. It's and people are like game planning and looking forward. It's kind of like okay, we've heard that now. You know, we've seen that. It's what else you got? What else can you and, do? And and that's something that like I try not to do the same set twice. No matter where I'm at, I try my best not to do. Yeah, the that's same for set damn sure. Twice. And and for like, it's always love, a different energy, honestly. Like much love to like every artist out there, but a lot of artists I know. Have been doing the same set for years. If I go to one of your shows, all I'm gonna say is, "Play squad shit," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it's, three years it's, later, play squad shit. Yeah, yeah, and and some people replay their hits from like five years ago or something, and it's like, okay, that's cool. People know you for that, but that I think that's why I'm so like, like mysterious to some people because they might have heard a song from me three years ago that was like the hottest shit to them but then when I come again then it's something completely different so people are like oh shit I think real artists respect that because they're like damn this guy's always doing something new but I think for the general population it's like they get accustomed to hearing the same thing what did Lupe say did you design something did you do something new and did you design uh, did you design what did he say again to do something new or he basically you naming on the guest list super yeah. yeah did you improve on a design to do something new did you do something new and that's something that, like, man, it, it's when you do something new, people don't know how to act, people don't know how to react to it. But I think people, my favorite show was that one you did in Standing Rock, that uh, Mini Wachoni one. Oh yeah, the one Shout that, out to at the, uh, yeah, the, the one at uh, here. PKC there. Yeah. And, th- and that one was my favorite because I watched all of those artists go up there, 
and do their thing. But they didn't really have a good energy. Like, to me, they were there trying to get recognized for something. Stewart was just performing. Like, there's a really big difference, man. You can see it. Like, as many of the shows that I've been to and everything, like, there's a difference between the people that uh, go there to, uh, you know, try to try to get recognized or whatever than, you know, people who actually perform. Star quote searching. Like, dude, like, uh, like Jantz, uh, that at the show in Bismarck here recently, like, I watched him fucking just lose it up there. Yeah. And it kind of, like, I'm not going to lie, it tripped me out. I had, to, I had to go outside for a second, catch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> it's like screaming around and shit. It was, it was dope, you know, like, the people like that, need to be recognized more than the people that you know that don't bring it like yeah that don't that don't think that they need to bring it or something you know like no you that goes do. that goes back into the whole thing about like impressing someone like i like i when i go to a show i expect to be like entertained yeah but when when you're not when you're not up there like performing with like enthusiasm or, or passion or whatever it's boring yeah now I gotta sit there and be like, oh, fuck. I like love making. You know, like if you go up there, just show up. It's it's not that awesome. Yeah, but yeah. If you can go, if you can go there, you can go. Like I'm gonna do put in some work here. You know, all of a sudden it's like it's that much better. See, see to me, that's the difference between fucking and love making. I always like what uh, Hannibal Burris said about how he's not a good first fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he, he compares his sex game to Jesus, where he says, "I am not a good first fuck." He said, I'm not, I can't give you all I have in the first try because then I have nothing left to surprise you with. <laughs> so if I go hard and we continue a relationship or we go further into a relationship and you expect me to do some freaky shit, I already did everything on the first try, so I don't really got nothing to show you anymore. So then you're going to get bored of me and you're going to go find somebody else who can give you that. But he always talks about how, I mean, he was mentioning about how, you know, it's like Jesus where he's like, you know, first try, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it was, it was all right. But then it's just, he said, it's just like Jesus. You know, you give it a few listens, and you realize, oh, this guy's one of the best out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> but I remember a few people were like, I, I brought that up, and I, like, I was joking around about it, and, they're, and, they, and they got into like a serious conversation about it. They're like, no, nah, fuck that. You got to hit it like as hard as you can each time. And it's like... Uh, okay, like I, I really wasn't trying to go that, down that route, but then I kind of started breaking it down and I really brought it in. Sit down, son. Yeah. We're nephew. gonna have a talk. Toshka. Sit. My boy. Nephew. nephew. So mm-hmm. Sit down. Uncle has stories to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and, and I mean, getting on that topic. Bring your though. woman here, I'll show you how. <laughs> getting on that topic, though. It's, it's, I'm not gonna take her from you, I'm just gonna borrow her. Yeah. I'll give her right back. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. <laughs> Bring a camera if you want, but I already got one. <laughs> no, but I mean, when, when you get when on this, when she you, sees me, you can be telling her not to look at it because might, she might leave. You. <laughs> well, when you get on that subject, like my eyes are up here, darling. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead. It's like right. when you get on that subject, though. It it, it is. I, I agree with that. Like, why would you get? Why would you show somebody like if you're with a female and you plan on being in a relationship? Why would you give her all you have? That I give the time? same percentage she gives me. That's so if you're gonna bring 110, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you 110. You gonna bring 75? I'll probably give you 80. It's about it though. <laughs> Nothing more than what she deserves. Or... No, no, never, <laughs> never, never, never more yeah. than five percent of what she's giving. Yeah. No, and but... I never try to go out of my way for somebody that's <laughs> not gonna go out of their way for me, man. Because I mean, it's it's. I try to make it. It's kind of gross to talk about, but at the same time, like. No, fuck that. People got to be comfortable talking about. No, yeah. I I mean, I mean, it's just like the reason I say it's gross is just because there's so many. I know how detailed everybody gets, so. You wouldn't want to like. You want to surprise somebody like. I don't know. I've always said this. Like people look at me, I think I think females look at me like oh. This guy's got a small one. This guy's gonna be terrible. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. And then, and, but then it's kind of like average surprise. Oh, it's like surprise, surprise. <laughs> Here's Stewie. It's, or... it's not a. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Stewie. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it's kind of like 
I've always, I've always, yeah, I've, it's just tripped me out because I realize like people already have like preconceived notions of what you're going to be like. I always before. try to undersell myself. They, oh shit, there you yeah. go, man. I mean, yeah. and, and and it's like <laughs> that. That's kind of like nowadays. I guess growing up in general, everybody just claimed to have like you know the biggest dick ever, which was like the a cool lie. thing to do back Obviously. then. Apparently. Like, fuck that, man. It's fucking, like, nine soft. <laughs> really? Is it? That's that's completely false because <laughs> it's not. Yeah. You know a little too much, bro. You obviously don't have a... Have you, not that's that not what your girl said. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what's the rule, Ethan? If you measure seven soft, you need to, you oh, you need to be good at anything. Words. When you measure seven soft, you don't have to be good with words. And you're way too good at words, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But I mean, like back then. I rely on my charm to get it. Do, do you remember that back then? Everybody just yeah, everybody was like the just hottest thing yeah, to have. yeah. Like, Apparently, yeah. you had to have the biggest dick to like bone just to be or something. Cool. No, just see, to be see, cool to me, too. I don't even give a shit. Like if, oh man, people that do that, they probably only last like two minutes. You know, one pup champs or whatever. The ones that have to brag about it, like oh fuck them, God's gift to women. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, last time you and your girl That's broke up, working, she man. came over, man. She talked a lot of shit about you. Made well, you know bang. what they say, right? Necessity is the mother of invention. So, I mean, you got to work what you got. And I think any girl could sense that. Well, that's, like that's, that's what I always said, too. Like, I might, I might not be equipped with, you know, a fucking hang dang to the knee or whatever, but, you I'm know, a, I know how to put, use it. Yeah, no I work shit. with what I have. Yeah. And I kill it. I became really familiar with, with, uh, I was trying to think of a clever name, but I'm not going to name my, my junk right now. That, that'd be weird. Because he's a... Yeah, we'll go with Bane. <laughs> Boy, it's kind of like one of those things where you know... It, it's, it, it's, I'll compare it to like... You were born in the dark. It was born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> molded by it. Yeah. <laughs> molded by it. Literally yeah. molded by it. <laughs> well, I, it's kind of like you, you can... Uh, you know, I'll compare like you knowing your junk. As to oil drilling, you know how far you can go and you know how far you can't go. So it's like you know how far you can come out, you know how far you can go down. And, you, and you, when you learn that and you become familiar with the depths you can reach, you you can go from there. Because if you don't know your depth, but, you, but you, you're shooting for the moon, you're going to let yourself down, you're going to let your partner down. I, I think the dudes that are concerned are like just being just hung to the knee are some of the most insecure people in the world. Yeah. Like they constantly have to reassure themselves. Well, see, know? those are the people that have to brag. And, yeah. You know, you know, like why why do you have to brag about it? I don't give a shit. She don't give a shit. Just go wreck it. Yeah. If you're that cool, just go wreck it. <laughs> or shut up. Put it down. I guarantee you, she'll still come back to me. Just kind, of, just kind of like having I'm a head. Kid. It's kind of like you know counting coup. You know, like some of those cocky <laughs> dudes have like three feathers and like you know that she's a chief. You know, they usually have headdresses and they're some of the most quiet, most wise dudes yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> this guy only wears three feathers in a battle. <laughs> chief over here wears a headdress down to his uh, ankles. What does that say? He even gave some away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how that warrior over there got his three feathers. <laughs> Chief had to give a couple away because they wouldn't fit on there anymore. Had no more room for them, yeah. so he just started giving them away. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. He didn't even earn them. He just gave them to them. Yeah. But I mean, here, but, you ain't got no feathers. Come here. here. Go get me that. Just, go get me some water. Yeah. As simple as that. Lala got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my but, but I mean from my perspective It just comes down to confidence If you're confident in yourself and what you got And what you can do it's all that matters yeah. Exactly That's all, Yeah that's that's exactly what it is You need to be confident They said the average size is like 4 to 5 inches That's average in the world Guess I'm a little below average <laughs> Slightly <laughs> uh, Slightly below average Slightly below average <laughs> Eeps, I'm Eek J with Josh bro <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> I too. Josh. I, I too am very humble. He yeah. Says. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! I too am very humble. Yeah. So. 
confidence goes a long way in everything. Like if you, there's people who can who can uh, you know guarantee you that they know what they're doing, and not just like in. I'm not the best looking fella out there, but uh, rest assured, can see rest, my rest assured, if he like worked out, people, I mean. He told me himself it wouldn't even be fair. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it, yeah. If I was if I was skinny like most of the other skins out here, fuck boys. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Skinny little fuck boys. <laughs> shout out, shout out if to I, Reg. Yeah, if I, who? Sh- shout out, shout out to Reg who said if his if his inbox doesn't match his status, he's a fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But uh, yeah. Continue. No, yeah. If I was, you know, if I was one of these. Slim fit, played basketball every day, and uh, stole from my grandma, and uh, used my mom's ride to go pick up women. You know, I I use my brother's ride. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sometimes my sister, if she lets me. Yeah. So, sometimes I use my sister's van. It's hard on gas, but you know, just use it when whenever I gotta go to the mesh. Uh, I try. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to <laughs> make them pay for it. Ba- babe, you think you could score a couple bucks from your grandma or what? <laughs> if, if you're whacking bed, make sure to get it beforehand, you know? Yeah. So that way. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, so that way, when you're done, it's like she's like. Yeah, I try to get it beforehand. Like, we'll, we'll go to the marina before we go to her house. That way, when she's disappointed, <laughs> I can leave. No, they I already got the. Uh, it's old Indian chick. <laughs> Besides, I mean, it's an old vet chick. I, I ain't trying to impress no one. I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to show her the world, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to show her the I'm just trying to show her this bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Show her around the district. Maybe I'm the trying bed. to show her the world. I'm just trying to show her my district. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say district? Or? No district. <laughs> oh man, that's terrible. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Oh man, I know about that. Got a little. We got way off topic. What and? are we talking about? And <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> when you were younger, what was the first uh, first porn you ever seen? Me, me personally, like, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> sorry, I mean you're not here, but it was just a blank tape, man. Like there was no stick around or nothing. <laughs> you know, I, I ain't gonna lie. Was about hoping that. for the best. <laughs> threw it in. And at that time, it wasn't DVDs or nothing, so like I had to like rewind it back to where it was, oh, just so man. he didn't know I watched. It. <laughs> what? Sky, sky already up, man. There's down to the second. Yeah. Had to get that part just right, boy. Play, stop, play. Nope. Stop. Exactly. Get five Rain. more strokes left. I gotta get it back. <laughs> or like remember you could like pause and then slowly press it. And... Oh, yeah. Frame by frame. Just scooting it along. <laughs> <laughs> I remember hey, you remember you used to have a couple of, like DVDs I think and then like wait you, what you like, started out with DVDs no he, like this was probably further in the career of it, but <laughs> I remember like a couple of the boys were in the room we're watching it I think like you guys or who I don't know who that was but somebody's in there like oh first one to get a boner has to leave or something like that <laughs> <laughs> you remember that shit I don't know who said that but somebody oh. said that and like everybody's yeah, kind of sitting there watching like this everybody's just <laughs> yeah, kind of lean forward <laughs> Holy shit. Everybody stand up. Yeah. Doing boner yeah. checks. <laughs> Everybody stand up and lean back. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking at, man? I'm not checking you out. I'm just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> just walking down the line, just patting them like that. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't you know, you know, Get out. Crap, <laughs> man. Well, what's this? Uh-huh. Got a first loser oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Grabbed a handful. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> first what do we have here? First Got loser. ourselves a loser, boys. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Give him that look. You disgust me. Yeah. Get out of here, you know? <laughs> still, still holding it. You disgust me. Get out of here. Get out of here. Heaps is like, 
the biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a loser, but I'm the biggest loser. <laughs> oh, man. That's ugly. <laughs> you remember when, uh, uh, I'm just gonna say, Kyle, remember when all those magazines he had? He had like the archives of like Hustler and Playboy. Holy oh yeah, shit. yeah. He must have been God MC. Yeah, no. Like he was, he was, he was the man. Like he. Where did he get all the mags? I don't know. They were. I think they were his uncles or something. <laughs> Probably his but, dad. But there was like a like in their boiler room. There was like a like a stack. Like there, there'd be like three stacks of just like just endless porn. porn. And it was like I remember we like. We treated that shit like the library. Like, we'd check one out and bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> he was writing names down in the yeah. issue, even. Wrote down the condition it left in. Yeah. <laughs> Took a Polaroid of the condition it left in. No pages were stuck together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made a note of which pages were already stuck together. Gross. No, but yeah, that was... Um, he was the man. He was, he was the... Uh, the plug. The bookkeeper. The page master? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. The page master. I like that. Clever. Every first month he's collecting dues, two bucks to stay in the club. Or what? Oh, man. That was... Uh... And if you, if you kept the mag too longer than you're supposed to, it was a... It like was like piece? paranoia too, remember? Like, because cause mom would always clean the room. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like paranoia, like heavy, like... Going you know, sitting there in the one spot under the mattress is dead. I'll clean my. I'll, I'll fix my bed. <laughs> You're in there helping, picking up your clothes. You come back home, you realize your door is open. Your mom's in there cleaning. You're trying to rush her out. <laughs> Mom, I got this. You don't have to clean. I'll clean my room. <laughs> no, no, I got this. I'm trying to be more responsible. <laughs> you guys told me I need to start being more responsible. I'm gonna do that myself. And then she gets <laughs> mad because she knows something's up. Because she knows damn well you don't clean your own. Yeah. Room. Yeah. Nowadays it's fucking. Teens I know. have it easy nowadays, yeah, man. Dude. They got everything on their phones, man. Plus, they can clear their browser history. Holy shit. That's another reason why I don't like Androids. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult to clear your browsing history. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, it's not? Oh, you guys know huh? pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you guys said that with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna lie. Sometimes just like, I get bored. I mean, if I die, I trust one of you guys to clear my browser history. <laughs> Last thing I need is Adeline looking at my phone and look just like... Trying to look up something that starts up peeing, and all of a sudden, like, porn <laughs> pops up, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh what's that one meme? Remember, uh, it's got, uh, when somebody writes www.p, and then it's got that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jordan. Jordan. Fields is yeah, sweating. yeah, he's just sweating. <laughs> X video, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. My boy Dustin. That's why you gotta go with X video. Nobody ever looks up stuff with X in it. <laughs> <laughs> X video. Holy shit. So, yeah, um, We've been on the fitness grind for like the past month or so. They, they have been on the fitness grind. Huh? Said so they have been on oh, the fitness yeah, grind. Oh, yeah, me and, me and Ethan have. Uh, Pierre was on there for a Let's split for a second while. there. He still, he still shows the results. For, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to like get this overtime. Trying, but, trying to get this overtime here. But. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with grinding for that money. Unless you're a slave to it. On the slave to the slave system? Slave to the greenbacks. <laughs> But the fitness grind is definitely, uh, it's tough. I hate it. It's tough. I hate every minute of it. But I lost about 16 pounds in a month. <laughs> I can run my mile in nine and a half minutes now. And you know where they did it at? They did it at? Sacred Life Center, right up the road in the Mish. Shout St. out. St. Michael's, North Dakota. Fern Leggett. Fern Leggett. And, um, yeah, so the, you know, it's, it's fair, a little got fair enough. pee. <laughs> little fruity pee. You got fair out there just roasting, roasting the rappers from Minnesota. Like, oh, <laughs> oh man, I seen that Farron, bro. Yeah. I mean, that was that was funny. Farron is a he, he he's a sav, but to an extent, a savage is somebody who can dish it out and take it. He can't take it. Simple as that. Word. But he can dish it out. But when he dishes it out, it's pretty sad. <laughs> like sad, like it's sad no, for the person. Sav, like oh, sad. Okay. But. For the most part, yeah. Oh, this wasn't even recording. Oh, gross. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's heart just started going. I just been, all right. Whatever, I'm going to bed. He's, I'm going to bed. All this material just picked lost. up the laptop. <laughs> Later on, then I try to piece it back together. Just grab yeah. this and drug it all. It's all the cool <laughs> 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 just, hey, hey. just grabbed it and pulled <laughs> it. <Dude. laughs> Scott, I've dropped this mic like Joe Budden and just walked away. 
Speaking of Joe Budden, do you guys watch Everyday Struggle? I, I watch some episodes sometimes. We need, we're going to start doing that. We're going to call it the bar exam. Where okay. We're going to be uh, reviewing random bars, and we're going to give it a rating and react to it. We so will have videos for that. So keep, in, keep, in, keep a watch close eye for that. It'll be pretty epic. And we are going to get in the business of sketch comedy. Um, not right away. In the process of writing shit. You don't write shit, Joe. Sponsorship yeah. is appreciated. Pierre Pretty Weasel. We don't know what to call him yet. Shout out. The plug. Pee-wees. Pee-wees. Shout out. Plug. Yeah, shout out to the plug. Be, uh, funding the advertisement and promotion for it. And some of the equipment for it. So we're, we're thinking bigger here, people. So we're thinking bigger. So we got to invest in that. Well, we don't have to. And <laughs> in our first subscribers here, we'll yeah. try to give you like a free shirt or something. Oh, know? there it is, free shirts. Mm. <laughs> so for the for the people, just keep in mind we're gonna start doing giveaways and whatnot, twat not, you know. Right. Just a matter of time. Not not, not right meow. Yeah, you know? not right this minute. So don't expect something and be like, yo, do I we, need a free I, shirt? I think we have a star quilt somewhere <laughs> from when I graduated that we could probably give away. I think I got a Pendleton in the closet somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants to loan me their. The Coda Nation Invitational Alterney jacket that we could give away. You know? I think we have some boots that were signed by uh, Taboo laying around. We got participation ribbons. Uh, some size 12 and 7 Bat Nike Hyper Dunks, you know. Got a pair of moccasins when I was a baby. <laughs> so, um... I hope everybody can hear <laughs> that in the background. Yeah. That Shut is the infamous T-Loans. Tony digging in the fridge. His government sounds, name is Anthony. Sounds of the sounds of uh, T loans. I mean, if you ever been locked up in the middle of the night in the Spirit Lake Nation area, you probably know him and met him plenty yeah. of times. Many times. Just Wired. say hello to him once in a while. He likes that. <laughs> Tony. What's up? There he, he is. He said sup. We're gonna feature T loans on one of these episodes. We are. Maybe the next one. So. You guys keep in mind for that. that so for, is, for all your incarceration needs pure, in the Spirit Lake Nation is, area. He is pure gold. <laughs> let's say that. Pure gold. Pure gold. He's pure gold. He's the man who once said that we don't drink from the skulls of our enemies enough anymore. Word. I mean, he's right. You know? <laughs> all right. Anything else? We, we kind of better... Nah, we're, shout out to Sky, our cameraman here. Yeah, shout out to the cameraman Sky. Shout out to uh, Shinobi Homie, the dude that uh, made our intro video Ooh. for uh, YouTube. Thank shout you. Out. Shout out to uh, bitch ass James. Shout out to Austin. Shout out to X. Shout I'm gonna be to up Terrence. there in uh, in uh, Minnesota. Um, probably at the end of this month. That or I'm gonna be in jail. I don't know. I got another <laughs> court date on the 27th. We'll see. Let's hope he doesn't get thrown in. Otherwise, I'm gonna be doing these. Solo, or Pee Wee's. Um, We're just gonna call you Pee Wee's on here. Sky, okay. Pee Wee's, and uh, Stewart are gonna have a a free Crazy Bear promotion <laughs> show. <laughs> We're we gonna promotional show. Hopefully, All we can that. get enough to uh, you know, get my bail. We'll say it's for bail, but I'll probably use it here. to get something <laughs> to go to go to get to the next <laughs> show. I'll probably We're, use it to get to the next show. We're gonna make yeah. some T-shirts that that uh, you know, like a dollar of the twenty dollars. Will probably go towards my lawyer. Keyword probably. Um, yeah. We'll have like a we'll have a special design of like a bar behind or a bear behind bars. You know? A bear like with the with the headdress on. You know, we'll, like just chilling behind bars, like we'll, looking all pitiful. And, we'll call him Smudgy yeah. Bear. You know. Hashtag hashtag pay the cameraman too. Or yeah. <laughs> Hashtag, Hashtag we, ac- we accept tips. <laughs> Hashtag uh, hung. Che. Hashtag we got $3 tables at Spirit Lake Casino Resort starting at noon. <laughs> 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 you, you will be grandfathered in. You will I'm be grandfathered there. in if you come in. You will be grandfathered <laughs> You could stop and say hello to our, our floor slash pit bosses, Tiffany Graybear, Crystal LaFountain, Charbonneau. Ryan Charles and of course good old Jerry Kostecki. Give, give him give him a high. Ask him about those Vikings. He'll talk your ear off about that. There it is. Promotional cross promotion. I like it. Too bad they'll never uh, promote us. But never say never. I'm working on that. Hey. Yeah, I like that. So this was episode two, and um, stay tuned for more content. 
I'm guessing in a couple of days we're going to have episode three, depending on everybody's schedule. Maybe tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. Oh, well, we'll shoot for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, tomorrow? What's going on? Maybe you get off work till it might be on. <laughs> we do not condone calling it at work here at in this at, area at the stronghold. <laughs> yeah, work, 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 people. But um, but yeah, you should call it. Well, people, <laughs> it's going to be a fun ride. More music coming soon. Got a show in Minneapolis. Shout out to Hustle Tribe, Mister Chase Manhattan. Get, get get me some more hats from him. I'll I'll definitely. Try to get a hat for you. Dustin, I love you. I love you so much I gave you my white hat. Damn, that's heavy. Do you like that hat too, didn't you? I think everybody did. I think Sky tried it on. <laughs> I'm surprised it brings me back a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. It's, it's been fun. Each of these are always interesting. You never it's always a real happen. treat good to night be, uh, good fight. hanging out with uh, life friends is, and everything. Like don't, don't be a fool. Chocolates. Wrap your tool. Click their ticket. Never know what you're going to get. <laughs> All right. Yeah, peace out. Peace and love, people.